Okie dokie. Um, first off, I want to say that immediately, as soon as I started this new patch here, I noticed that my frame limiter in the menu, and you go to options right here, where is it? You go to options and uh, I think basic graphics. Yeah, ma main menu frame rate. This locks it to 60 frames per second. Because normally my, my frame rate is at like four or 500 uh, you know, frames per second in the menu here. So now it's finally locked to 60. As soon as you get to here, it does still go like wildly all over the place when before it gets to here. So that's the first thing I've noticed. I haven't actually tried anything yet. So let's see what this 1.7 is about. Um, now, I noticed, at least on the last patch, that uh, you can start a, a stage at 100, 90, whatever frames per second. Anywhere in that range, you know, 90 to 100 frames per second. And then it always ends at around 70 to 50. Testing, what's up, man? You're here, quick. Um, so yeah, so we're... We're going to see if, it, if that still happens. I mean, I was told that it's likely not to fix it because that issue was supposedly just discovered recently. But I, I feel like I remember that happening since the beginning. So maybe this update will fix it for me at least. We'll see. Uh, and I can't remember. I guess we do Portugal quite a bit. So let's try Portugal. Let's see if, if by the end of the stage, it's down to like, you know, 50 to 70 frames per second when it starts off at around 90. And, and keep in mind, I have like, you know, crowd turned off. I have, uh, I don't have everything at like super ultra. So um, when I'm not running OBS, by the way, I'm getting like 114, 115 frames per second at the starting line. And then it, you know, varies from there, drops around to, to 90, but I'm losing about, uh, I'd say like 20 or so frames per second, you know, just from running OBS in the background. Um, so let's go ahead and this will try it. I haven't raced it all today. I just got back from a massage. I feel much more relaxed. How are you doing testing? First of all, since you're like the, you're the only and main person in the chat. <laughs> um, but yeah, thank you so much, for, man, for, for joining in like so so soon. Hopefully they fix some other things, too. Um, we're going to test out some rain. I heard that the rain particles are supposed to be better now. So that's really cool. Um, because the rain was kind of like... We'll, t we'll try the snow, too, to see if maybe it looks better there. Okay, I'm not noticing too much, uh, you know, frame stutters, even though this is a... Uh, I just downloaded this, you know, like right before this. Good luck. Okay, on the left side of my, my windshield, I don't know if this is a new thing, but it's almost completely white. It might just be like the, the reflection of the sun, or glare, sun glare. Um, we'll see if it, it disappears when I start moving. Pretty good, good. Five, Pretty good, good. Four, three, two, one, go. Three left over first. Okay, that was a two, weird little jump right there. I don't know if you saw that. So we're at 96 frames per second right now. So let's see if it, if it drops gradually over the course of the, the course. It's at 91, 96. This is a really cool stage. Oh my gosh, okay. That would have been bad in real life. 97, 99, okay. It's not 89, 97. I wish I had my, my frame counter. My frame counter is all the way in the top right. It's really tiny, so I have to look really far off the course to be able to see what the hell it's at sometimes. Um, 95. Now I noticed some stages are, are worse than others, but I do, I feel like I recall it with Portugal, this happening too. This phenomena. Cut the hell out of that corner, baby. Okay, a lot of shadow popping right there. I don't know if I noticed that before. Yeah, a lot of shadow popping in this town area. I don't know if you guys saw that. We're at 88 frames per second right here in the old town. 86, 91, 96 again. Doesn't really seem to be going over 100 ever. 90, 
That was close. Into six right, fifty. Long crest, nineteen. Ninety-one. I saw it dip to eighty-seven, eighty-eight. Ninety-five. Right. Oh, that was super aggressive. I didn't mean to be that aggressive. Okay, saw a little bit of a stutter right there. Ninety-three. Oh, I'm not really paying attention to the the stage. I, I have been on the stage quite a few times. It's a really cool stage. 89, 95. Okay, so still hovering around 80 or 90. So it's it's usually like the, the last quarter of the stage is where I notice the frame drops in, and you can really feel it too. You can feel it in, in how the, the the car behaves because you don't feel like the, the steering is as responsive. You know, 90, 95, 91. Future, what's up? Simmer, what's up? I didn't see you guys there. We're testing out this patch, as you probably could gather from the title, but uh, we're seeing if it, if maybe my uh, weird performance issues are gone. 85, 87. It does feel a little bit more sluggish through here, but not like crazy amount. Ninety-six. Seems to be pretty stable, honestly. Not noticing any stuttering. At least anything major, like like little tiny ones occasionally, but that could just also be like, oh shit. That, that could also just be like, because I'm using an AMD card, and, and they're known to be a little bit less better, or a uh, little bit less good for uh, fra oh, frame pacing. Okay, we had a little bit of a, a stutter right there when we went through that bush. You saw that? I do got to keep in mind, though, that, that the shaders are still loading because uh, it's my first time running the game since the update. So honestly, it's pretty smooth, all things considering. We're at 96 frames per second. 97. Like, if this, if this were someone's first experience with the game, I don't think they would even really notice the, the little micro stutters that happen like once or twice through, through, uh, through the stage. 93. I'm very sensitive to them, and I, I know a lot of you are as well, because I've heard other people talking about it. But I, I, I can notice it, like right there, I noticed a little bit of a frame drop. Um, but it's, it's nothing like game breaking right now. Oh, shit. 90 frame. Okay, so I think it's getting close to the end here. We're still at 90, 92. 94. Oh, shit. Okay, I heard a hair. Okay, there it is. Okay, a big old stutter right there. You see that one? 70 frames per second. 68. Okay. 69. So it is still happening. 66. 69. 70. Yeah, really sluggish feeling right now. 72. 73. It's almost always near the, the end of the stage. Maybe it's like, like loading uh, the people on the sidelines. 67, 69. Now we're gonna try this one more time after this run. Let's see if maybe it's because it's compiling shaders. Uh, if that m might be what's going on. 71, 73, oh. 72. So definitely still happening, but 69. It, I remember getting into the 50s before too, so. I don't think it's gotten down that low. I think the lowest I've seen is 65 or 69 or something like that. 63, maybe. Um, we'll see if it drops all the way down to the 50s like it used to. Or at least, like I remember. 69. Okay, this should be near the end here. Yeah, like right after this, I think. 68. 65. Okay, that's 64. 66. Okay, so the lowest I think we saw was 64. So maybe it's better, but it also could just because this is the first run, first stage, maybe it needed to load some assets. I don't know. Um, we got three what's ups. Or actually, old well, two what's ups and one what's up. That's pretty cool. Okay, let's see if we do the same exact stage, if we get the same performance out of it, and if we see any noticeable stutters. I'm just going to give it the benefit of the doubt that maybe that's what's going on. Maybe it's just purely because that was the first run through in the game. It needed to load certain things. 
Okay, so we're, we're starting off at 100 frames per second right here, dipping Five, down to about 98. Four, it's low three, 101. Two, one, go. Into three 96. Legs, 95. Okay, I noticed a little bit of a stutter there, but nothing crazy. It's like a nor uh, ice 88. What I would really love to see from this game is a solid 120 frames per second at, at my oh, solid stutter there at my, my current graphical settings. Um, and we'll, we'll go over my graphical settings after this stage here, if I can remember. 89, 90, 94. Um, and we'll see if, uh, but I, I would really love to get like a solid 120 looking like this because I don't think that's too unreasonable. Um, it, it's not a crazy, uh, high performance looking game. It, it, you know, there's a lot of vegetation, things like that, but you know, we, we've seen this much vegetation in, in other games probably. And, and uh, you know, Unreal Engine 4 is a, a, not a new game engine. So you think certain things would be able to, be max maximized 82 frames through here 87 i noticed a big big stutter moving into the city here 86 85 84 it almost sounds like it seems like we're getting like a little bit lower performance than last time 80 88 93 okay we're getting back into the 90s 88 again 87 90 87 it seems like we're getting like worse numbers 89 yeah now we're like hovering around the 80s like the the high 80s before i think we were around the low 90s here 86 87 89 91 85 okay still in the 80s high 80s but or middle 80s i should say 80 just straight straight that's our lowest one 80 we hit hit 80 right there in the town that's our lowest before we get to the end there okay it could just be that i'm just looking over at the right time so too like so take that into account everybody that watched this in the future weird little sound glitch right there i don't know if you heard that 86 yeah we're i feel like we're in the in the high 80s most of the time now it feels like like it's a little bit more sluggish sluggish too than the last run which is very strange is it like keeping track of like some kind of data from the last run, like dust particles or something like that? I, I don't know. 89, 83. I mean, obviously to get like a really fair representation of what's going on here, I would need to record the frames per second while I'm doing the run here. Otherwise I'm just kind of like looking over at random times. 93, but, but I do notice the average of everything I'm looking over is a little bit lower than it was last time. 93. Like, I'm not seeing too many, like, you know, 97s. 91. 90. 81. 88. 90. Ah, fuck. I always never paid this. Okay, we didn't get a, a stutter right there hitting the bush, though. We did the same thing. Okay, 93. Feels a little bit smoother right now. 91, 95, okay, that's, that's one of our highest numbers we've had so far, at least this far in the stage, 96, there we go, feel some little micro stutters here and there, 60. okay, this is where we started noticing some slower performance last time, or around here somewhere, I'll let you know when some lower numbers pop in, 88, 87, 88, 87, oh. Okay, it does seem more even over here, but maybe I'm not close enough to the end. 92. Okay, a little bit of a, actually a pretty big stutter right there. 68. 69. So there's a noticeable change as soon as you take that, that hairpin. I, I noticed that the, the screen is a little bit more smeary. Like there's almost motion blur, even though I have that turned off. Like the, the whole image looks very sluggish right now. 
um, like it's not updating properly, like like the, the refresh rate is too low or something. Um, yeah, my steering inputs feel a little bit delayed. Not like a ton, but enough to where I can notice it. And it does affect my driving. 70 frames. 68. 67. So it seems like we still have the same issues as, as we had before, but um, if it isn't, if it, if it is any better, it's not like a ton better. Uh, but this is still definitely an issue. 65, I just saw. 69. Doesn't seem to be getting any, any higher than 60, 68. Oh, we got 70 right now. 68, 63, 65. Yeah, the numbers are kind of all over the place. Uh, let me show you my graphic settings here. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, we're not going to do too long of a stream here because I, I want to keep this, this kind of focused. But let me show you my graphical settings so you can kind of get an idea of, you know, um, what we're looking at here. Basic graphics, full screen borderless, epic anti-aliasing, V-Sync is off. Anisotropic filtering is at 16. Uh, up, upscaler is off. Um... Okay, uh, we got medium shadows, fog is on, particles on ultra, weather ultra, crowd is ultra low, which is pretty much off except for the, you know, the corner, not the corner workers, the uh, start and, and finish people. Uh, cr uh, ground cover covers ultra, trees ultra, dynamic objects ultra, low car reflections, post -pro processing is ultra low, mirrors off, skid marks off, track ultra, textures ultra, shaders ultra low, and motion blur is off. Now, um, let me try to just turn all the ultra to high and see if I can notice anything different visually and see how much performance we can get out of that because I would like to, to, to max out certain things. Um, if this goes well, I will try to um, uh, put a few things at ultra, just see you know what kind of performance we can get out, out of uh, what, what I would like to see, like, like, like the foliage. I want that to be ultra you know, the track detail, stuff like that. Um, but let's go ahead and try it with, with these settings and see if we can notice a significant difference. From my testing in the past, not in this particular patch, but my testing in the past showed that um, it almost didn't matter what settings I, I put it at. It, uh, the very minimal change in frames per second. Even if I went, even if I go to ultra low everything, and turn the resolution all the way down, I'm still not able to achieve like insane frames per second. So I think there's a serious problem with optimization still. Like there's just things happening in the background that you can't see are happening um, that are still really affecting the performance of the game, in my opinion. Um, again, I'm not, I, I'm not a developer. <laughs> like for instance, we're at 89 frames per second right now before we are at 100. And we're already starting off lower with lower graphics settings. Okay, now okay, now we're at 102. Let's see what, if anything changes. 103. Five, but yeah, very minimal frames per second three, gain, two, even when you lower three, things significantly sometimes. Okay. Back back down to 95. 30, so it's almost like it just doesn't matter. We will we'll go all the way to the end just to 40, see if it matters, but. For some reason, it's playing uh, the sounds for for um, paved surfaces when I'm sliding. 93. So I'm also going to say that the reflection on the, the left windshield does seem to be dependent on my direction, but it's more extreme than I've ever noticed it before, like ever. So I don't know if they made some kind of a change in the, in the way that reflections work or render or whatever. Um, but it, it does feel different to me. We're at 95. I mean, there's almost no... There, there, visually, there's no discernible difference uh, in performance, at least. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. 93. Like, we didn't get... It, it wasn't even worth lowering those settings. It's almost like, like they didn't have any effect at all. Um... So we're gonna go all the way in. Maybe it'll even out the frames per second for the whole stage instead of just, the, you know, the, the the front of the stage. Like maybe the end of the stage will be uh oh shit, will be a little more stable. 
We're going to try some rain after this and see if, if that looks significantly better and also see what the kind of what kind of performance we can expect from uh, wet weather now. 89, 88, 92. 91, 87. I mean, you, you would think that I, I would at least get like a 10, 10 frame per second gain lowering all those settings from ultra to high. That, that's Okay, I saw a pretty big stutter right there. I don't know if you saw that. 87. 88. I'm also getting those, those audio clicks at the end of uh, the code driver's audio samples. I don't know if y'all can hear that, but there's a, a very noticeable click on my end. Right there, hear it? Right there. Okay, that one didn't do it that time. I was trying to tell sound effects about this. He's one of the, the audio engineers in this game, and he said he wasn't able to, to replicate it. Okay, that one didn't have a click on it. Right there, it did. I heard it again. Not that time. Okay, uh, 92 frames per second. Left over Eighty-eight. Ninety-one. Sixty. Late six right. Forty. Yeah, our. our Heard two more clicks right there. Ninety-one. Yeah, we're not getting any performance uh, benefit from lowering those settings. Let Let's try something. Uh, I wonder. I wonder if it doesn't take effect until I, I reload the game or reload the stage. Maybe that's what's going on. I'm gonna give it. I'm gonna give it a, a try or one more try after this. To see if that's what's happening. Because maybe that's what's going on. Actually, let's go ahead and just do it now because I, I don't want to waste everyone's time here. Let's just go. Let's do it now. I, I'm gonna reload the stage. So I'm gonna quit it and then go back to it here. Where was I in Portugal, right? At the short, like the five, four point five one, I believe this one. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, I, I, I would assume that this game is definitely is it's designed for console, um, for PC. It's, it has a lot of weird things going on. But did I see the new fanatic, <laughs> pathetic sim cockpit? I have not. I'm gonna have to check that out. Um, Trev, I, I have noticed stutter, but not like a ton. Definitely nothing like it like it used to be. Um, but definitely I do notice stutter. So we're going to use the same car combination here. Same course, I believe. I'm going to see if, if we have a noticeable improvement in the, the starting frames per second. And the... Uh... Let's see where... Let's see what we start at. Okay, right now we are at 76, 81... 80, 89, 94. Starts three left over 92. Two right. Okay, we're at... Luck. It's the same. 101 is, is the max here. 102. Same, same thing. Three left over and our, our three regular right. FTS is... 95, 93, 91, 92. Okay, so we're not getting any, any uh, benefit in lowering the graphics. Let's go a little bit more extreme. Lowering the graphics here. Um, that's not what I meant to do. Just out of curiosity, let me try the upscaler. Now, I, I don't think, I don't remember this having any positive effect before. I remember it looked bad and it didn't run much better. Let's go for ultra performance and see what happens here. Let's, um... Okay. 95 frames per second, 96. So all that does is make it look significantly worse and it has the same exact performance, 92 frames per second. So I don't know why anyone would want to use this. Um, clearly this version of, of uh, FSR needs to be updated to whatever newest version because this just looks way worse and it performs exactly the same from what I'm gathering here. Um, it's, it's almost entirely useless. Let me try Ultra. Uh, quality and dynamic resolution is on as well to try to keep the frame rate up let's see what we start off with 
Okay, now we're at 104. That's the highest numbers we've seen. Okay, but in motion at 96. 94, yeah, there's almost, there's, there's zero benefit, honestly, to, to using an upscaler. At least with my GPU, I have an AMD GPU now. I switched over from NVIDIA to AMD, but no point in ever, uh, using that at this point, at least. Um, unless you want, like, just that, that extra sharpness looking. Uh, let's, let's turn that back off and see what our numbers are just again to see. Now, I do have, I have a 5950X. I'm not overclocking it. But my CPU is pretty good CPU. Uh, we're at 100 standstill and 94 while driving. Okay, um, let's try, let's try, um, lowering the advanced graphics to, I guess, medium on everything, except for, you know, let's see if we get any, any benefit off that. I mean, I have a, I have a 7900 XTX, which is a very top of the line card, at least for AMD, that's the top of the line card, and then a 5950X, I have 64 gigs of RAM, uh, I'm running this game off of an M.2, like Samsung SSD, some whatever the fastest thing is, with, with plenty of room on, on, on all my drives. My operating system is running on, on, a, on an M.2 SSD as well, a different one. I, I'm running two different ones. And then I'm running two other SSDs. Um, I'm running all, all solid state drives. So like, that's not part of the problem, I don't think. And yeah, 198 frames per second. Doesn't matter what my settings are. So he, okay, here's a good example. And and it could be that that I didn't reload the stage. I will say that my that's maybe what's happening. But I already tried that, and we, we got the same figures. So let's try to go ultra everything, and then see if we actually notice anything change. Um. So let's go ultra. Shadows Ultra, Car Reflections Ultra, Mirrors Ultra. I don't like motion blur, but that's an extra thing, so keep it on there. Everything Ultra. Let's see what we got here. See if there's any change. Okay, that's weird. I, I set everything to Ultra, and then I got lower grass density. What the hell? <laughs> and I and I'm at 72 frames per second. What? <laughs> Right and four left. Did I did I not save or something? What the hell is going on here? Okay, okay. let's try to reload the stage because maybe we just changed too much and it just got confused. Okay, same stage. Very strange. Very strange. Try just lowering shadows. Okay, we'll try that uh, after. This, this go here. Really strange that, that it blurs out the car when you put everything to ultra. Like, why, why would you ever want your car blurred on the main menu? And, and that doesn't make any sense. There's definitely something, something wrong with... Um, this doesn't look bad. This looks actually really good. That, that, that level of blurring in the background is fine. There's a little bit of a... Not dithering going on, but there's some flickering with the shadows that... It's very... Um, really takes you out of the moment here. Uh, okay, we're at 60 frames a second. Stuff is pretty smooth. It looks really good. Three left over crest, two right. Good luck. Okay, it looks like we're maxing out at around 69 frames. Let's see what happens when we start moving. Into three left over crest. Okay, we're at 67 frames per second. So we, we are actually... Um, it's able to go lower than 100, but it's not able to go above 100 still. Yeah, this motion blur is horrible. Yeah, we're at 63. So that's with everything at ultra. So let, let, first of all, let, let's turn motion blur off, because why the fuck would anyone want that in a racing game? <laughs> I don't understand why that's in every game. Um, okay. Uh, we don't need mirrors at all. It's so, we don't need that because there's no one behind us ever in this game. And now in real life, of course, we would need, need mirrors, but 
we don't need in this game. Uh, skid marks, again, you're never racing really behind anybody, at least uh, on time trials. I guess if you're in club or something like that, you could see skid marks. Or, uh, no, I think it's only your own skid marks. So if you, like, backtrack or something like that, right? Because you should still be able to see deformation of the track, I think. Um, and then crowd. We'll keep that altered for now. Fog. Let's, let's see what that, that does for our performance. Just those couple settings here. Okay, now we're up to 70, 80, 73, just with that one setting. So motion, okay, 60, oh, 69. Okay, so maybe we're as a fluke. I, no, it feels a little bit smoother. So motion blur actually, and mirrors uh, do quite a bit to the, let's turn, turn the crowd off right now and see what we got. We'll get to the shadows here in a second, Trev, but. Yeah, reflections. I, I'm well aware of what are the heaviest hitters. We're just trying to see how much thing, act, uh, how much these settings actually matter, because we're seeing very, very minimal frames per second increases when we're lowering things. Even all, watch. I'm going to lower everything to ultra low. After uh, a few more these little tests here, we're going to put everything to ultra low, and. Keep the resolution the same because because you don't want you know uh, you don't want that to lower. But um, I'm I'm only at 1440p by the way. 1440p by it is by like 5440 or something like that. So it's it's a lot still. It's probably similar resolution to 4K in some ways because it's so wide. I don't I don't know exactly the the math on that. But um, we're gonna get rid of crowd here. Just crowd. So ultra low is basically off. So you notice everyone's gone over here on the left now. And now we're sitting at 80 at standstill. And seven high 70s now. So we, we got about like eight or nine or eight to ten frames per second just by turning the crowd off. Still dipping uh, into the low 70s though, and it feels kind of sluggish. So I'm gonna guarantee that we're gonna we would hit around 50 um maybe even lower like maybe even 40 or 50 frames per second at the end of the stage where we notice like those significant frame drops but uh we're just kind of seeing if this update changes any of the, the basic stuff that we're experiencing we'll we'll just uh, a couple more things here that um like shadows can be on like medium and then still a good and and we'll turn these to, to medium as well. We still don't need mirrors. Let's see what this does. See if the update changed anything. Okay, now we're sitting at 100 or 98 to 100 at standstill. 96. Uh, we're at 95. So that, it brought us up like another one, like six or seven frames per second on average maybe maybe 10 at, at most um really not that significant um you i i would expect to see like larger performance now we're gonna go all the way extreme everybody we're gonna go all the way to the lowest settings on everything even the basic graphics here let's we're gonna go to ultra low so everything's ultra low okay um, and everything is off that, that can be. So we're going to go to basic graphics, turn anti-aliasing to low, um, and isotropic filtering to off, and let's see what we got there. Okay, now we're at 127 frames per second at standstill. Obviously the game feels a lot better now, 123. Like, I should be getting 120 frames per second in this game. Um, closer to Ultra, in, in my opinion. There's just not much going on in this game. Like, at least visually. Obviously, there is a lot going on in this game because it, the performance is not where it should be. But, um, I mean, obviously, if you're like an eSports guy, you would you would probably want to drive like this anyway because you, you could see uh, what's actually there, right? Like, if it's just like a visual thing. Or if there's actually like like a bush that's going to interfere, or an actual rock, it'll it'll still show up here. But it, if it's not going to interfere with you, like it's just not going to render 
or not, um, it's not going to display or whatever. Um, and you get the highest highest frame rate, but 120 frames per second at ultra low. I should be getting like 200 frames, I think at least with with my current setup. In my opinion, based on on my experience with other games, for instance, BeamNG at ultra, almost everything ultra. <laughs> I get like 140 to, to over 200 frames per second in that game. And that game, from what I know about it, is much more demanding of a game to run, or it should be, because there's so much physics taking place in the background. Like, it's keeping track of everything, you know? But, uh, I mean, obviously, this is not, like, acceptable graphics for my, my, my setup. Like, if I was okay with these graphics, um... It'd be one thing, you know, because the, the performance gains are worth it, right? Because we're getting at least over 120 frames per second solid. So what we could do is probably limit it to 120 and then still probably dip to the hundreds on some spots. But it, it would be a lot less noticeable uh, than, than dipping from 80 to 50, you know. Um, it would still feel like a lot smoother. But I mean, I mean, look at the trees, though. I mean, like, it just is not... Um, like, the, the trees just... There is no LOD on the trees like that. Oh, okay. We do have a little bit of LOD, like when it's about 10 feet in front of you. Um, yeah, this is just not presentable looking. Now, one of the things that that, that makes one of the biggest differences uh, from what I, I've tested is anisotropic filtering. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see what it looks like uh, at these low settings here. But anisotropic filtering like really brings out the detail in the road. See, like, already, look, look at the extra detail we see. Like, we can see little rocks in the road now. Um, that's one of the, the biggest changes to, to, to the, the texture. Not like the textures, but the texture of the road. Uh, really brings out a lot. So if you're not running anisotropic filtering, I, I would recommend it. And, and I mean, we, we did see a bit of a performance dip there. About a four or five frames per second lost because of that. But I think that's definitely worth it for the extra granularity of the of the, the surfaces. I mean, look at the road here, right? You can almost see like individual um, rocks that make up the asphalt, and then without it, it's it's pretty much just like a blur. Let me show you here. Oops. I mean, look at that a huge, gigantic difference. Now, now you can just maybe you can't see it on the stream very good, but uh. It's an absolutely gigantic difference in detail, like overall, like I said, granularity of the image. Um, so I think that should be on no matter what at the highest setting possible. Uh, let's try medium anti-aliasing. We do need to try rain still, rain and snow. Okay, um, I mean, honestly, medium anti-aliasing doesn't look too bad. Like, we're... See a lot of... Flickering with the power lines there. But it doesn't look gigantically horrible. Well, it does kind of like when you stop moving. Um, let, me, let me turn it up a little bit more. You can't tell? Okay. DJ, what's up? People! Okay. Let's see. Let's turn on high. I'm try to find acceptable levels here for my eyeballs. Okay, this looks a little bit better. Um, this is probably... Honestly, pretty acceptable. Anti-aliasing-wise. It's just smooth enough to where I'm not really noticing any uh, jagged edges. So that's good. We're, we're at 114 frames per second, 116 right now. In motion, at standstill. We are at 119, 123. Okay, so, I mean... Slight improvement. So let's just keep that the same, and then let's see what we can we can mix up here. Uh, not mix up. Now I want trees. I think are, are one of the biggest things that you really notice. Uh, so I want those at, at ultra, and I want ground cover at ultra. Let's see if we can get away with everything else at, at ultra low. I mean, this this already looks a lot better. This is definitely uh, bordering on on acceptable visual quality, in, in, in my opinion. And we're at 108 frames per second right now, 106. 113. Um, you definitely still notice, like... 
like there's just not as much detail in the environment, but but it's it's not horrible. See the bad. Let's try dynamic objects because I think dynamic objects is pretty important for uh, certain things as well. But that, that doesn't look horrible. Uh, you have a dilemma between the LP8 and C12. Oh, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend doing what I'm doing here. Like I wouldn't recommend installing this on the outside of the C12. Definitely just mounting whatever your fa favorite wheel rim choice is to the outside of it um, is is preferred. But and that that's how I would run it too if I didn't do all my dumb stuff that I do. Um, and I, and I would be more than happy with it honestly because I'm a one wheel type of guy. It might sound funny because it's like oh dog you use a million different things, but but. I wouldn't be using these for my own enjoyment. I, I'm, I'm literally only using these other weird things for your enjoyment so you can watch me suffer, pretty much. That, that's really all that's happening there. Um, so, yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend this, but but uh, it still feels great, honestly. Like, I mean, it, it makes it to where like, I can't really reach the, the paddle shifters very easily. Um, I, I am thinking about putting the paddle shifters on the other side of the, the mounts here, and then maybe making a, a few little washers for little spacers so I can re reach it a little bit easier when I'm when I'm driving. Um, but yeah, I 100% recommend this wheelbase. This wheelbase, as I've said in, in the review, feels the best I've ever felt. And that includes, compared to the Simagic Alpha Mini, that includes, compared to the DD1, you know, more powerful bases, easily a lot better than the DDWB. That, 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 that thing is a brute right? It's a very brute force thing. And the force feedback feels very smooth and natural. But this one, you can all you can you can border in to the the unnatural feeling force feedback uh, sensations, like uh, really sharp sensations. And then you can tone it down. So it, it is nice to have that sort of ability to get to that point and then past it and then be able to uh, not the headroom, but have the ability to tone it down and still have it feel really good. Because you kind of always want to feel like you have a little bit more than what it, than what your settings are, you know, because you want that you, you do want headroom too and, and force feedback, um, a little bit. You don't need like a ton like people are, are claiming. You just you just don't. Um, but yeah, this this is the best force feedback experience I have felt, and and I haven't even gotten into, into tuning yet. I haven't tuned any of my force feedback since the LP8. I just left it all the same. I'm running this at fifty percent force feedback and. Um, and natural friction, I think at 25 or something like that. And then everything else is at zero except for game spring. Um, and yeah, it, it feels excellent. Um, excellent. So I, I would definitely recommend this over the LP8, but if you can find the LP8 for cheaper, the LP8 does have the advantage of just being a standard, um, you know, What's it called? Like the shaft, you can mount a wheel to the shaft or quick release, and then it, and it's, you know, there is no button box though. But so you, you are getting a lot of extra value, because even though that my hands are far away from this, I still have access to all these different buttons for you know ignition. I'm, I might not be able to reach them with this hub be making it so far away, but they they are still at my disposal for menus. And then if I if I am racing, I, I can still reach for them and, and activate things if I need to. But um, okay. What was I doing? Oh yeah, uh, object, dynamic objects. I didn't think this was this is a, a very important thing, but but in my testing, dynamic objects, um, in order to to kind of make the environment feel more real, it is pretty important. Like like signs and, and or like I think hay bales, stuff like that, um, are part part of dynamic objects. I think so. We'll try at medium here. Let's see if we notice any difference. We're not really in like a city portion where that stuff would matter, but um, I don't think. But We're at 110, 108. I mean, honestly, though, this doesn't look bad with these settings. Um, we're going to check out the weather here in a little bit and, and, and how things look at night, because I think that'll be important, um, you know, because the, the performance does lower quite a bit when, when it's at night and you're having to render the, the extra shadows from the headlights and things, things like that. But okay, so let's see see what these same settings do on a, a wet. Oh, my keyboard just died. On a wet, um, it's wet ass. What song is that? Is that is that Cardi B? Um, 
You're sure about a case in C12? What, what, what do you mean a case in C12? Uh, Sass says, isn't it better to turn down the force feedback down in game? Yes, it is. Uh, the reason why I'm limiting it in the software, in the main software, is because it has a lot more uh, force feedback available to it. And when, for instance, when I have a uh, game spring on, so like when, when your wheel is turned on certain games, you can't really adjust all the parameters of that. And it is just like whip, whip, uh, it'll whip to the, to the, with, with full, full power, it'll, it'll whip to the, the neutral position of, of the steering wheel. And um, I, I still have shoulder injuries and I, I don't want to damage my wrist because I, I play guitar. Um, so, so there's certain reasons I, I do have it limited. Uh, to 50% power in the actual canvas software. But obviously, if, if you don't have shoulder issues and, um, you know, if you're not in, in my particular scenario that I just set up in your mind there, um, yes, it, it is best to lower the force feedback in game and then have the wheelbase at 100%. If, you, uh, if as long as you, there's like no kids using the wheelbase, because 100%, 12 newton meters is, is an actual dangerous amount. Um, Um, let's see, uh, have they fixed the pixelated windscreen drops? I don't know, Trev, we're going to find out. Uh, we're going to try it at, at ultra low first and see if it looks decent, and then we're going to raise it up from there. Um, I run your Magic Ultimate at 100% and turn it down game. Yes, Saz. Um, and that's what I recommend to most people. Um, this is just my particular case. Uh, I hope, you, hope I'm making that clear as to why I, I would turn it down. But this being 12 newton meters, it's already like double the power of the last wheelbase I was using. Um, and I, I never used the full 8 newton meters of the last wheelbase. So, uh, you mean about overall build not being standalone base? It looks silly. Yeah, th this does look silly. Um, and, and also, having the wheelbase integrated to the hub is something I, I, I talked to Camus about. And obviously, it's a way to make things cheaper, right? Because... Most people will uh, will be able to use this to its fullest, right? Because as long as you're not the type to to switch out your your wheel rims or your you know your wheels, the hub and everything, you know every, every five seconds or every different car you drive, you know if you're if you're good with just driving with one wheel rim, then you don't really need to switch things out more than once, right? Like you just choose whatever your favorite wheel rim, whatever your favorite size, and then it's done. Um, but I can also see people not liking the fact that it's integrated and it's like thick, right? W which is odd to think that anyone would really care what's behind the hub because if you think about it, you have a, a ton more knee room, first of all, because you don't have a, a wheelbase right here at all. Um, and, the, and then I guess depending on, depending on your setup, because maybe, maybe if your, your setup is like more or like your pedals are closer to you, maybe your knees would be closer to the hub. But honestly, uh, if your knees are close to the hub, they'd be close to any hub. Any Every wheel hub is about this much <laughs> so uh, th that I've seen. Uh, there are some smaller ones, I guess, that Fnatic makes. The, the club sport ones are, are adjustable, and you can kind of, like, make it smaller. Um, but yeah, like, the, the, the sort of, like, accepted wheel hub sizes, I think this is pretty in line with that. Um, and and, and the, the, the base behind it is smaller than the front here, so... Honestly, uh, as long as you have clearance for the hub for your knees, you have clearance for everything else, except for maybe the, the paddle shifters if your knees were like this for some reason. But why would your knees be like that? They'd be outstretched. Um, but I, I found that I don't I don't have my knees at all in this setup. Uh, I, can, I can move around in confidence. And um, I, I will say if, if there's a wheel mounted, it, it is really nice having a quick release so I can take this off when I'm editing and I don't need to worry about that. But when, it, when it's mounted... Um, it, it, it would make it a little bit harder to get in and out of the rig because you can't just take it off and put it on to get in and out of the rig if you have a really, really tight setup. Uh, so that, that is something to take into account. But um, nobody's looking at the, at the back of your wheelbase unless it's you guys, right? Like, I have a sort of unique sort of angle that I've chosen. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people show off the back of their wheelbase or the back of their hub uh, quite like this. So, I mean... If you're a streamer, maybe it would matter, but otherwise, I don't think it would matter to anybody. Um, it's more like a mental thing, like maybe it's harder for you to accept how it looks mentally because you're you're used to a different standard, and, that, and that's fine. It, it takes some time to, to adjust to anything that's new. 
Um, and some, some people never adjust to it. Like some people, people just can't get over certain things mentally. And that's, and that's fine too. Um, for those people, I, I wouldn't recommend it because uh, it, it is a sort of new concept to kind of have it integrated. And, and it's, it's against, it's against, against the grain. Camus is an, an against the grain company with almost everything, everything that they put out. That's kind of like a, a major release. You know, the, the DDWB when it came out was against the grain because it had buttons on the wheelbase. No one does that. The um, the LP8 was kind of against the grain because it was a triangular wheelbase. No one does that. Everyone does like square or rectangular. Uh, the C5 was against the grain because it, uh, it was all integrated into the, the hub and it looked weird. You know, the, the hub was like round and a lot of people didn't like that. The little paddle shifters were tiny. That was against the grain. You know, the, the C12 is, is also along the same lines of, of you know, the integrated hub. Um, I think it's a little bit more traditional, though. Uh, it, it looks like a more tra traditional setup, but it's still against the grain. It, it, all the major pro products are against the grain, and I think that's good. It's good to, to, to work outside of the accepted norm because then, then you can find new things that people are accepting of. If, if no one ventures away from, the, you know, the, the, the same shape, the same design, the same, the same, that, then, then the advancement is less. And, and as, as you can see, this entire setup is way easier to ship because the whole, whole thing is just this thick. So they can choose a thinner box. They can, it's easier to ship. It's lighter because it's, it's all one, one thing. Um, like these kind of advancements in the technology are, are what's going to drive other companies to, to try things differently. Like, oh, they did that. Let, let's see if we can do a variation of that. Like, and maybe that's how we're going we're gonna to get the price point down for the masses, right? Because, you know, let's say, let's say you don't trust Camus, right? There's plenty of people that they don't trust Camus. It's a newer company. Understood, right? Any, any new kid on the block, you're not going to trust them until, you know, uh, you, you get to know that, that person, right? So it's, it's perfectly understandable, you know, and, and why people don't trust newer companies because they don't have the, the track record, right? But um, companies like this, companies like Camus, companies like, like Moza, you know, are sort of paving the way and they're forcing other companies to change their approach to the market. And that's what's important. And that's why I, I stand behind Camus so firmly and, and why I think it, it's Camus right now is the best thing for sim racing out of any of the companies. It's the best thing. It doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what company you run or prefer. It doesn't matter if you like Fnatic, SimuCube, whatever. All those companies, at least eventually, will have to change their marketing strategy and their, their uh, development uh, of their products, their pricing, because of companies like Camus, because of companies like Moza. So even if you don't approve of, of, of the designs, how they look, you need to at least respect that they are actually bringing the prices down for everybody. Because once something like this comes onto the market, 12 Newton meters for, uh, what is it, $549 plus shipping or whatever, um, that's the same price as a Moza R12, just the base, not including buttons, paddle shifters, right? Um, you're getting a lot of extra value for this. So a lot of people, uh, a lot of people are, are, are convinced that this is too much money for 12 Newton meters because Moza, it's the same price as a Moza. It's like, but you're not taking into account that there, there's so many more features here that are not present on the Moza. And then, then they're like, well, you could just buy a hub and then and then make it this. And they're like, well, how much more is that going to cost? Two or $300, right? You're getting what you pay for, right? Like, uh, you know, maybe it's a more trusted brand. That's great. But you're also paying another couple hundred, three hundred, four hundred dollars to, to get the same level of functionality as this. So you have to at least respect Camus for what they're doing to uh, to basically force the rest of the market to take a look at what they're doing and adjust their strategy, their business strategy. Um, but yeah, that's that's in case anyone's ever wondering, like you know why I I, I believe in Camus so much and why I, I I stand behind them so much and why I really try to um inform people like educate people about them because a lot of people don't, don't know know about Camus. They don't, they don't know what to expect from the company that's why i'm trying to, to spread the word because this is not just good for Camus. me talking highly of their products right you know they make really cool stuff for affordable prices it's good for the entire industry you know it might not be good for those companies right because they're going to have lower profit margins right or they're going to have to change how, how they how they um 
make the products, right? They have to ch change your manufacturing processes uh, to maybe keep up. But um, yeah, it it's forcing everybody, every company to, to, to change. And that's good. That's good for us. You know, do you want to see more products come out for cheaper? Yes, everybody does. That's going to help everybody. This, this is what this, that's doing right now. Uh, do you want to see uh, your friends be able to experience sim racing like you get to, but it's just too expensive for them? Companies like this are what's making it possible, in the future at least, for your friends to be able to get into this. So uh, more people getting into this, more competition is a good thing. Um, so... Oh, over an LP8, yes. Um, although an LP8 is cheaper, and, and actually, I guess depending on where you get it, like some places are really inflated prices because they're hard to find. They're hard to find because they didn't do uh, they didn't do much production of the LP8, so it, it might even be a similar price. I would definitely recommend the, the C12 over the LP8 if they're any anywhere near the same price. Yeah, looks like an e bike hub motor. That's nice. Um. Broken ankles, what's up? I haven't, seen, I haven't seen you in a while. You'll pay the extra money as long as my... Uh, oh, pedals don't break in three months. Your C5 brake pedal didn't work at all when you got it. Then my LC100 started slipping in the software. Did you try... Have you looked at, at, at your uh, the load cell positioning? Because I talked to Camus about this. On the, on the LC100s, I noticed... My, uh, a similar thing on the LC100s that the, uh, sometimes the load cell would kind of flicker. And I'm, I'm like, that's kind of weird. Uh, so I actually, I, I put something under the load cell, like a little bit of a spacer, about th this big. Um, and then I supported it, and all that went away. And, and uh, these are the same LC100s that um, I was showing off before when I, when I showed you all that it had a little bit of a, a weird thing happening with the brake. Watch, watch how, how even my, my thing is now. Okay. Oops. Look at, look at how even this is, right? No flicker. These are the same pedals. Um, so maybe check that out. And I, I will say that the the new updated LC100s um, are a pretty big, big improvement. I, I have a set. I'm going to be doing a review on it soon. I haven't gotten confirmation if I'm allowed to yet because I, I'm not sure if they're they're out on the market yet. But, um, but, but check it out, Broken Ankles. If you still have that... If your ankles are still able to, to, to push them down, um, I, sh I shouldn't joke about that because I, I know you actually had, had that issue, and I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. But uh, I, I mean, you name yourself broken ankles, so I, it's something that, that you're, I think, comfortable with. Maybe not comfortable physically, but comfortable with mentally. But, but try that out, and if you have any questions, email me at demurg at gmail.com. Let me put it on here. Um, and I, I can help, you, help walk you through what I did to, to alleviate that, that weird little flicker issue. Um, and also, Camus did fix, there, there was a software-related issue, um, and, and I, I was notifying them about this for, for quite a while, that every time you would restart the, the, the Camus software, the brake pedal specifically, nothing else, but the brake pedal would reset its calibration, and you have to reset it each time. Um, the clutch didn't do that, and the throttle, throttle didn't do that. I, had, I think it had something to do with the, the load cell or something like that, but, um, or whatever circuitry is in that little box, but um, it doesn't do that anymore. It saves my 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 settings. I don't. It's and it feels exactly the same every time. But um, let me let me put my email address here. Broken ankles. In case you you want to uh, run anything by me, I, I can try to help you, guide you, or at least share my my experience with you. Um. Okay. So let, let's go ahead and test this this game out in wet weather and see if the rain looks better because that was supposed to be one of the things they fixed. Uh, sorry to make the, the stream long. I, I meant to make this a really short one so people could watch this in the future and, and kind of just get the gist of, of things really quickly about my experience with it. But we got a little bit deeper into things because of uh, um, the odd performance issues of this game. I need to get something to eat here in a second. It's, it's almost 9 o'clock. So this is going to be our last little test here. Why can't we go? Okay. Um... So it's also kind of really annoying that you can't do time trials in the wet. Uh, I, I would like to see, like, active rain in time trials. But I, I know it's not really, like, time trials are, are about, like, better conditions because you, you want to put down the best time. I get that. 
Um, but the only other way to experience weather is to do like multiplayer or quick play, which quick play, this is what I think is so dumb about quick play. Let me run this by you. Quick play. Okay, let me see if we can actually add, make sense of this. So time trials, right? You click once, twice, three times, four times, six times, seven times, eight times, and then I think you would start, right? So that's so like a total of nine or ten clicks to get what you want. Unless you want to change like the weather or something like that, right? Um you know, to get to get to here. Let me see. Uh, so about like yeah, about ten clicks, something like that. Depending on, you know, if, if you want to just hit hit, go straight into it. Don't change the weather. Just don't change anything. Um, now let's try to do a quick race. Um, you get the the sprint pedals. Yeah, I think uh, any issues would push people away from any company, and I, I'm sorry that you you experienced that. Um. And yeah, you know, I, I've, I've had my fair share of experiences with all these companies. You know, uh, I've had a lot of negative experiences. But for the most part, besides Fnatic, I have been a... Oh, actually, Fnatic and then a couple of the companies that uh, were, were... They were kind of like generic companies. Like when I was testing out the, the sort of generic shifters and handbrakes, I, I had problems with those. Not like huge problems, like they still worked, but I had problems with those and I, I couldn't uh, reach out to the the manufacturer or anything like that because it's like, who is it? Who's the manufacturer of that? It's just a generic product. So um, besides Fnatic and those generic products, I haven't had any co uh, company that, that has not st uh, stood behind their product. The, you know, anytime I had an issue with anything, they send me stuff. Like my big biggest examples with this Bash Pro shifter, um, this is a thousand plus dollar shifter. And the, the first unit that I was sent didn't work at all. Um, I mean, it, it plugged in, the electronics worked, but it, 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 nothing could be recognized in the software or games. Um, and they shipped me another one, I think, in like two or three days, something like that, uh, from a different country, you know. So I don't, it, it doesn't bother me that this product was an immediate failure. What bothers me is if a company um, ignores something I mean it's one thing if a company is so overburdened I guess but honestly that, that would be a problem with, with customer service and actually that would be a big big problem in my opinion never mind I'm gonna take that back what I said um company should always prioritize customer service so if you reach out to a company and you have a problem with the product they should be willing to help you resolve it by any means necessary especially if it's within the warranty period like they shouldn't you know uh, Trev says your Logitech G Pro load cell brake pedal had a similar problem. Fix it by loosening some bolts around. Yeah, sometimes like really simple issues. You... Now, I, I guess that might be a problem with quality control. And, and a lot of companies will skimp on quality control just to get more products out the door. Uh, so they have a larger footprint. And that, that's not necessarily the, the best choice in the long run. But it, but it does get your product out there in the world and gets customers so you can at least service them. Um, do you have a customer? Oh, so right, let, let me let me focus on this. Uh, so okay, so one click, two click. Oh wait, we did this one. Quick play, one click, two clicks. I guess we could do quick generate, but uh, but I, I want to do something specific, like like a like a specific course. Three click. Um, I don't think we need to do any of this. Four clicks, five clicks. Six clicks, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 12, 13, 14. So do you guys see the point like I I'm trying to make here? Why name it Quick Rally when it's slower to get into anything by by a significant amount like like if we're talking 10 clicks and you add another five clicks what is that an extra 50 percent effort even though it's it's not that much longer to get into it how is it this is called a a quick rally or a quick race or whatever it's called and it's slower than other options does that make sense am i just tripping out on this like 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 i don't think there should be such thing as a quick race it shouldn't even be a, an option it, it should just be called like solo or multiplayer or something like that because time trials counts towards 
uh, leaderboards. Clubs counts towards clubs. Um, multiplayer counts towards multiplayer or whatever. Uh, but solo doesn't count towards anything, I, I don't think. So why not just call it like something like uh, practice mode, right? Something like that. Call it practice mode. Um, I think would be smarter. So anyway, let's get get back. Uh, and does anyone agree with me on that? Does anyone agree with that, that it's ridiculous that that quick race takes longer to get into than other? It, it, if it takes longer than any other game mode, it's not a quick race. <laughs> I'll just say that. Uh, quit without saying. Yeah. Um, and and th this is, again, along the lines of the user interface is convoluted for no reason. Um, there are certain things that just happen in this user interface that don't make any sense. Um, a good example that I've made, uh, I've made this point a ton of times. The fact that right here, if, if you're a mouse user... Right? If you're a mouse user, which a lot of people on PC are, like they don't want to use the keyboard or their wheelbase or whatever, a lot of people like, like using the mouse. It's a, it's a, a very intuitive form of, of navigating these menus. You don't have to like push a button to get over there 14 times, you know, and, and hope that, like for instance, right? Like I, I'm right here. I want to go to this middle one. So I'm going to push down and it goes to that. It goes to the left, right? And now I have to push right. So. And then this one, I would assume load template is going to, yeah. So things like that, those little annoyances add up to, to wasted time. They add up to extra frustration. So to avoid that, PC users use a mouse. So when you're, when you're down here and you push back, see how, how, how there's like a whole list of things that, that it changes from menu to menu, right? So I'm going to push back. And now back is quick game. Well, why, why isn't that just like somewhere else? Why does it have to replace that exact location? Okay, another, another good example is, is when you're wanting to press continue or escape uh, when you're in the game, those flip around sometimes. Why would they ever do that? Uh, for instance, when you, when you finish a race in like multiplayer mode or whatever, and, and you're down here and, you, and you're, you're hitting continue and you're just looking and you, and you think you're hitting continue, your mouse in the same spot, and then now all of a sudden you hit escape and you're, you look back down, you're like, oh, I, I hit escape. Maybe, maybe I moved the mouse too much over there. And then you, you're watching it and then you're like, oh no, actually continue and escape are just flipping. Why? Why would that ever be a thing? Who thought of that idea? Why would that ever be a thing? You know, and, and, and then to have it, have it, it, it's so extreme to the point to where e even the same button sometimes can like move a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right. Like, like this is all dynamic for some reason. Well, th these, these, these should be considered virtual buttons. They should always be in the same spot. That way you could develop muscle memory, but it, it is so dumb. It's dumb. Whoever designed this was not thinking at all. <laughs> at all. Peace, you, P you PC peasant. Um, or the option that shows up at the bottom that are just labeled enough. Yeah. And then it's like, what am I clicking? And then you're like, click one. And you're like, uh, which button is one? <laughs> anyway, uh, I think I know what you're talking about, Simrig. So let me give you an example here of something that, that, that... oh, no, never mind. We, we got to do rain. I keep on getting off track here. Uh, quick play. Solo. Quick. Create a rally. This thing. Let's find some wet weather here. Um, I, I guess, I mean, Croatia's got to have rain, right? We'll do it at night so we can... So heavy rain. Now, keep in mind that my, my, my settings right now for... The weather effects are set to ultra low, I think. So we're gonna see how that looks first, and then we're kind of like gonna try to bump it up and see if we can notice some some significant changes. It says, uh, okay, Simri, cool. This whole game is rain, a rainy. <laughs> it's getting better, Simrig, but 
it, it is a bit of a shit show, and, and I think it has to do with um, just maybe the amount of employees. I, I don't know. I don't think there's enough. Um, I think I think it's getting ever closer to what I envisioned for the game when it first came out, like what what I expected from it, rather, right? I expected the physics not to be good. I expected the uh, the damage not to be accurate because it, it's kind of like an arcadey game kind of in, in a lot of ways. I expected the graphics to be better, but um, but yeah, pretty much it's it's very close to, to being in line with what I expected it to be at launch. Unfortunately, it's months later, and we're still experiencing a lot of issues, but for the most part, it's a very enjoyable game. Um, at least for me and my personal setup, uh, I, I can't speak for everybody, but I, I, I've said many times in the past that I feel this is the best rally game ever released uh, when you consider it as a standalone game, not talking about mods, not talking about... Um, you know, the community supporting the game later. I'm talking about the initial release. It had a, a ton of stages, a ton of cars, good sound. Um, it's fun. The performance has got, gotten to a point to where it's acceptable. It's not maybe the best, but it's accept acceptable. Um, okay, the the effect on the, the lens here is still very bad, very poor, very artificial feeling, uh, horrible. Like... My biggest complaint about this is if you watch the, the transition from different cameras, the, the the droplets that are moving down the screen are in the exact same position on the next camera. It, when would that happen? Never. <laughs> um, okay, so the rain effects. Slight left, 200. Good luck. I, I really don't see many hitting the windshield right now in this heavy rain, keep in mind, but the weather effects are to low. Slight left, 200. Okay, that doesn't look bad. Okay. Six right, don't cut. Six That's three, three left. not horrible. Let's turn it on. Uh... Right, yeah, let's... Okay, the, the, the droplets kind of are a bit dynamic in terms of how... Short, Do they move like when you move? Or wait. No, I think it's an optical illusion. I don't think they're actually moving. Or maybe they are. That doesn't look bad. And this is on ultra low. So I'm I'm actually uh, okay with that. That doesn't look bad. We'll go through, through some water splashes too, and then maybe try some snow to see if because before the snow, never, not a single drop or not a, a single snowflake of snow, whatever it is, touched your your windshield in 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 the past. So hopefully they fix that. Um, very upsetting. I I live in a winter state. I know what snow looks like accumulating on your windshield and, and this game doesn't replicate that at all you have no accumulation on your windshield at all none not even like where the windshield wipers don't touch it just or maybe maybe that does but like it doesn't ever touch where your windshield wipers interact with the windshield uh, at least from my testing so let's go ahead and turn the uh the graphics all the way to high or all the way up so ultra low and then maybe, maybe particles might be part of that too. So let's try that to ultra. Um, I don't think anything else should affect that. Let's see what that looks like. They're above 240p. Oh man. When I first saw those, like, the pixels were as big as my thumb on the screen. When I first saw like some of the rain effects. And I'm like, or the water splash effects when it hits your windshield. I'm like... It, it was absolutely disgusting looking. Okay, so this doesn't look any different to me on Ultra. Maybe we have to reload the stage for it to take effect. This might be a good thing, though, because maybe maybe we can just keep it at Ultra Low and be happy with it. Uh, but this doesn't look any different to me. Does anyone see anything different that I'm not, I'm not picking up on? Oh, you have to load some new shorts? Yeah, I'll take it out. Yeah, it is it is better overall though. So let me, let me try to quit and reload the stage maybe. Um let's See if I can remember which one I did. I think I did this. I did I think I did Croatia Spring. 
Yeah, I did. Oh. Heavy rain, and I did night. Okay. So this is at Ultra now with a fresh load. Let's see if it... Pample, what's up? Um, keep in mind, Pampion, Pampi, Pampoen, Pampoen F1, that I've put myself in a position to review things. This game is a product, um, I am a product reviewer, so I, I <laughs> that's what I do. It's, it's not about just enjoying the game, like, I keep a critical eye out because I'm trying to... Uh, obviously help educate people if maybe they can't see these things or or, or if uh, or to help spread the word actually to, to make the game better for everybody but when someone thinks I'm complaining they're not taking into account that the things that I'm saying can make changes I have direct connections to the developers of this game to the sound engineers to the people that make the stages to the physics they watch my videos they comment on my videos they, they communicate with me directly. They direct message me on Discord, email me. Like, the things I say matter for the community. So don't take what I'm saying as me just giving the game shit and, and trying to give it, like, a bad reputation. That, that is not what I'm trying to do. I want this to be the best game it can be uh, for everybody. So so please please be aware of that. Um, and maybe you just didn't take that into account. But hopefully you can understand what I'm saying. Okay, let's see. This is with uh, ultra settings here on the weather and ultra settings on particles. So I, I would think those would be the only two things that would affect this. Um, I feel like this glare looks different. I don't know if it's if that's the case or not. Okay, let's see. Okay, I don't... Starts. Oh, I, I did choose a different car in accident, but I don't notice any differences here. Let me see. Oh, wait, wait. I think I noticed there's a little bit of a streak left behind. Wait, wait. Maybe I, did I just see that? No, it looks, it looks insane to me. Let's see. Let's see yeah. Maybe the maybe the droplets are a little bit smaller, so maybe they're, they're like a higher resolution. Um, I really can't notice it much difference. Let, let me turn back to ultra low and see if I can see it like a back to back here. That's another thing that's annoying. Like when you go to highlight something, it 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 shifts over like right when you try to highlight it. Fucking so horrible. Um, okay, that's not what I meant to do. So we'll go back to particles at. Ultra low and weather ultra low. Oh, weather off. We could try that and see what that does too. I don't know if we, I don't know if you could do that. Can, maybe there's a there's less concentration of droplets on the windshield. No, it looks pretty similar either way. So honestly, I, I think you could just get away with the ultra low. But um. Yeah, Trev, I think that'd be the, the right choice for now, especially if you already have it. Um, there are a lot of weird performance issues with this, but let's try to turn weather off and see see what exactly that does. I don't know if I've tried that before. I mean, I probably have at some point. Oops, I went the wrong way. Okay, let's try it with off. Let's see if we get any kind of rain on the windshield or anything. I'm assuming it's just not going to have, like, drops in front of you. Yeah, okay, so it's only on the windshield. So it's still like some rain effects happening. So honestly, if you're not concerned about weather, just turn it off and you're still going to get a pretty decent experience. Okay. So overall, yeah, the, the rain droplet effects are much more improved. Let's go ahead and go to Mexico and then and then hit one of those water splashes and see, see what it feel, feels like when the water splash hits your windshield. And there's two in a row, so I'm going to hit one. Try to hit, hit it as uh, straight on as possible so, so it hits the windshield. Because I think if you hit it at a certain angle, sometimes it doesn't hit the windshield. Um, and, and then on the next one, I'll, I'll try to like maximize the, the settings. So um, It looks like Rain X was used. <laughs> I mean, maybe 
Maybe it was, actually. Um, I'm sure they used some kind of film to, to maximize that. Uh, and then, you know, depending on, on how much like mud and stuff is hitting your windshield, of course that would get like scraped off, but I, I'm sure they, they, they use that kind of, um, that layer technology on, on the windshields. I would be surprised if they didn't, honestly. Uh, okay, let's go to Mexico. We'll go back to this car because it has a bigger windshield that we can see. So Mexico, and I believe it's on the, does anyone know off the top of their head what stage I know it's one of the shorter ones. What short stage has the the uh, water splashes in it? Does anyone know? Hopefully, y'all can guide me in the in the proper direction here because I don't want to just do a whole stage and not. I think it's this one, the shortest one, isn't it? You would think that they would want to chop it up and, to to have the most exciting portions of, of the the course on on the shortest one, right? Because that's kind of like the the, the fast energy one. Um, Kenya has the water splash too. Oh yeah, it does. You're right. Um, the Kenya ones I think are pretty brutal because they're they're wider, huh? I remember like the Kenya ones like slow you down more because you have a more distance to travel between the the where the water starts and ends, right? I'm gonna try a short one. If if we don't see it, then maybe we'll try the Kenya one and see if we can find it there. But um, we need to try snow too. But I'm pretty impressed with the the improvements that we see with the uh I almost started this without changing it to changing the weather. Um oh we can only do light rain. Well yeah, I guess we don't really need the rain because we're hitting the water splashes, but we'll pop that on there too to see if there's any differences from stage to stage. I don't know. Um Yeah, we need to try snow still. If the snow does not gather on the windshield at all, like there's no, at least give us some like little water droplets, right? Like the snow falling in front of us and not ever hitting the windshield is it feels so unnatural. It feels like you're like you know those old games, those old racing games. Oh, we have a water splash. There we go. Those old racing games, like where you you just kind of it was a, it was a toy, like a kid's toy. It was like, like a, a rotating track. Like it was like cloth or like a plastic strip, that, but it had like graphics on it. It would rotate on, on two rollers and a motor in the middle or whatever. And uh, not in the middle, but on, on one of the rollers. And then you, you you had like this little fake steering wheel and you could move left or right, but there's no actual penalty for hitting anything. But you could just kind of move the, the fake two-dimensional car left and right. Does anyone remember what, what those uh, toys were? Tommy, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. Um, so, so those things, that's what it feels like to me on the the snow stages. Like, like it doesn't really matter where you're going, the environment is not affecting the car. Um, obviously, like like the road surface affects the car, but I, I mean, like the actual vis vi the visual representation of the snow is not really interfering with your windshield at all. Um, okay. So hopefully, uh, and I, I also wonder. Does, do the water splashes in this game, does the, the, the water level rise when you're in wet weather conditions, or is it always the same level, I wonder? That'd be a good thing to test. I wouldn't imagine it would be. That, that would be a detail that's not really worth it for the extra effort. Um, but it would be interesting to see if it actually raises, like, you know, a few inches or something like that uh, during wet weather. Five, there you go. Right okay, this is with weather off. So I, I'm interested to see if, uh, oops. If um, if the water splashes are affected by you know the weather or the particle system, like or if you still see a little bit, you know, so we're gonna keep it to low at first, and then uh, then we'll move it to everything to max to see what the difference in the water splashes. And then uh, then we'll end the the stream after the the snow because I do need. To uh, not only get to bed soon, I want to try to get to bed earlier today, but I also want to, um... They should have the first long click be the, be the fast windshield wiper, not the second one. Uh, that's really annoying to me. Um, I'm going to suggest that on the Discord, by the way. Uh, Five left short, into six right over crest, 30. 
right to work next. 50 slowing. We're just kind of moseying over there, trying to figure out what this water splash is, but they still look lower resolution, but the rest of the game doesn't look 240p. I think the, the rain droplet, droplets look, look acceptable right now. Um, I think that they're much improved over the, the last uh, set of props we had. Oh, shit. Heffert's farm remembers. <laughs> um, I think we're getting towards the water splash. I feel like it's like right after this section. I don't know if I'm right about that. Um, maybe I was wrong. It's gotta be coming up, right? Okay, it's on a downhill po part like this, I think. Come on, water splash. Where are you? This rem these uh, these textures on the wall, like with the, the water, kind of reminds me of um, like Halo or something like that. Like the, the very first Halo, like when they first started like lighting or like Doom. Remember, remember Doom Three on Xbox? I never owned Doom Three, but I uh, I had a friend that that played it. I think and um. That, that lighting effect looked really similar uh, with uh, the wet the wetness where the hell is water splash okay I'm not really trying to drive good right now as you can, as you can probably tell we're just doing some testing I'm actually very very tired right now. Uh, I had a massage. That, that, that was pretty cool. I haven't had a massage in a good long while. I don't really get massages except for my wife sometimes, but... Um, where is its water splash? Okay, it's coming up here. I, I think I remember it. Right here. Where is it? Okay, there's water. I see water. Okay, we're getting close to it. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it looks like you get a little bit of extra water on the windshield without weather and particles, but not much. So let's go ahead and... I think there's one more. If there's not, we're just going to bypass this and move on to snow, I think, because uh, I, I get to bed here and I got to talk to my wife about some stuff. So we'll do ultra on this stuff and see if that makes a difference here. Yeah, much better. Five right, five left, over bridge. Not really much of a, 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 a visual impact when you turn all this stuff to ultra. So I, I would definitely say like, if you don't really care about this stuff, just turn it off and you're gonna still get a decent uh, weather representation. Yeah, Kenya, by the way, does have some... Kenya is some of my favorite stages in this game. Like, I love the Kenya stages. Some of the pace notes are kind of weird, but... Okay. Okay, here... Wait, I see water. Ah, there isn't another water. Okay, well, we saw one. We saw one of the water splashes. I see that these are still invincible. Yep. <laughs> these cactus are are literally in real life designed to fall apart because that's how they proliferate. These cactus right here. So the fact that you can't go through these. Like you could maybe even make it to where like you can go through them like a bush. Maybe they don't have to like 
explode apart like they would in real life. But these are literally designed, like each, each one of those segments turns into another one of these plants. So they're actually made so that the wind and the, the weight of its, its itself will make those fall over and then that, that's how they spread. Uh, so the fact that those are like uh, the same as like, you know, um, a tree that's, you know, 12 feet around is a bit ridiculous. But uh, you can't run over wooden fences in this game either, so uh, whatever. Yeah, it almost did, Tetley. A rock bush. Okay, let's go ahead and... Um... Oh, yeah, I should have done that, Trev. You're right. That would have been better with the wipers off. Let's go ahead and try uh, a snow stage, and then we're going to end this stream here. I'm glad I got to do this. I was, I was really tired, and I was thinking about not doing it because uh, it was kind of late when I started. I usually like to start when I get off of work, but I had that massage after work, so um, I got home at like 6.30 or something like that, and then I, then I was uh, updating this game and then uh, trying to do some work on my rig here. Um, I don't know what time I started, but... We've been going for an hour and 30 minutes already, though, so... It's, it's... Okay, look, look, continue, moved over here. And there, here's a perfect, perfect, perfect example. Oh, wait, you can't see it because... It, um, here, wait, let me turn these off. So, you see this continue right here? Okay, watch, watch. I'm not going to move my mouse. So, for anyone that doesn't know this game, does this. Or you're on console, maybe you don't notice this, but click it. And now, continues to the left of there. Sometimes, continue is right where back is. And vice versa. So, so now I can't click it again. Now I have to, like, I'm, 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 like, I'm just going through the menus and I'm like, what the hell? What? I'm like, oh, it moved over here. Anyway, so right there, that should have been where continue was. Now that's where back is. So he, watch, continue. I'm going to keep my mouse here right in the middle. And now it's options. Well, I, 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 that's fine, actually. But so there'll, be, there'll be times like when, when you're in the main menu and you go to click something and it moves right when you highlight it and it moves to the left of it. So like, you move, you move down to it, and then, it, then it's immediately something you can't click. Like right there. So I'm right here. There's a visual representation of options and extras right there. Right? And then I go to move to it. And then it's not where it should be. Like, why? <laughs> so clearly, clearly, they have programmed these certain buttons to, to be... Um, like, uh, it's an, a dynamic thing, and it expands from the right. So, if there's more than one option, uh, so, so so you see that the S, this S right here doesn't go any further over to, to the right, right? So, when I go, so now the T is right where the S would be. So, the more things add up, um, it, it, it like, it, it grows to the left. Which, okay, that, that makes sense for, like, sort of the visual flair of it, but it does not, it does not make sense for actual menu navigation. Um... Now, with a controller, it, it really wouldn't matter, probably, right? Because with a controller or a keyboard, if you navigate that way primarily, um, it really wouldn't make a difference. So let's go to a snow stage. And that that's the exact point. Uh, this, this game was developed with controllers in mind, which is... It's not a problem. Like, controllers are more prevalent than wheelbases. Keyboards are even more prevalent than controllers, right? Everyone's got a keyboard that has a, a PC. Everybody but he's, he's got, uh, has, a, has a keyboard. I would say a, a good, maybe not majority, but a lot of people that, that have a console probably also have a laptop or something like that or, or a PC or something like that. Um, and maybe not like, like a ton, but like a lot. So I would say that there's probably more keyboard, keyboards out in the world than there are game controllers just because the simple fact that business businesses have keyboards and don't have controllers but um so I, I understand why they would prioritize controllers over um you know controllers and keyboards over a wheel right or or um you know a mouse makes sense but just to to have that oversight for the pc version just doesn't make sense to me uh, uh that part doesn't make sense to me because it's like like why didn't you just alter it a little bit you know, or make it to where that wouldn't be a problem for both platforms, both both PC and uh, uh, console. 
yes, it's a, a console centric world, which is again, it makes sense because you know when you think of games, you think of like Nintendo, you think of these game consoles that are specifically geared towards games. So it ma it makes sense. It it does. You use your keyboard and wheel in this game. It's a nightmare, Trev. Okay, so let's go to. Uh, Uh, why can't I fucking go to a different location? Okay, here's another good example, right? In order to go to event options, I, I, I literally cannot, uh, navigate there. I have to use my, 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 the, the right click on the mouse, right? But... This is a good example of where the UI just fails you. Like, you see it over here, and you're like, oh, I can just go click on that. But you can't. Like, it just completely disappears when you go to click it. So you have to use the right click, which is fine. But, um, it's just one of those things, like, you know, why even have that pop up like that if you can't click it? Um, so we're going to Sweden, and we want heavy snowfall. Here we go. Everything's on ultra right now, so this, this should give it the best possible chance at accumulating some kind of liquid, whether it be frozen or in liquid state. I guess, yeah, you can do frozen liquid. That would be ice. Um, let's see if it hits the windshield. Please. Please. Okay, I see water droplets. That's good. But I don't see any on the actual windshield good luck. when I'm in the vehicle. So why even have like a representation of it on the outside of the vehicle if, if it's if you're not gonna do that in the, the cockpit? I mean, honestly, this level of snow wouldn't really be enough to kind of even really accumulate. There would be an occasional drop that hits hits the windshield and then melts a little bit. So there should be little wet spots here, but there's really not that much snow. Like, I don't understand why, why this is even considered. L look at this, okay. For those of you that live in winter states or winter regions, does this look like heavy snowfall to you? This looks like the lightest snowfall I've ever seen in my life. How, how is this the absolute heaviest snowfall available in this game? You know how long it would take for, for this snow on the side of the road to accumulate at this rate? <laughs> you know? You think the snow looks different? It looks a little bit more transparent, maybe? Like a little bit more uh, opaque? Or a little bit more... Uh... Yeah, transparent, I guess. You just got a button box that has an actual joystick on it. Oh, nice! That's cool, uh, Simrig. So anyway, I I'm disappointed in the uh, the snow. Still, it's it's very underwhelming in in every way. Um, that's gonna end this, the live stream, everybody. Though, thank you everybody for for joining in and and being a part of the conversation. Uh, have a good night or a good day. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you in a future live stream or video. See y'all. I'll check your videos out, Simrig. By the way, um, I can remember it's it's. Almost 9.30, though. See y'all. See testing. I didn't know you're still here. Uh, see Trev. See Uh, Who else in here? Ted Lee. FRX, if you're still there. Broken ankles, if you're still there. I right, see y'all. Sorry if I missed anybody.